Hey y'all, it's me Azalea and you're watching my YouTube channel Azalea's Way. Today I'm going to tell you how we bought this house for $20,000 cash. It was legally uninhabitable and we turned her into our home. <music> This house was a quarter acre of totally, totally, totally overgrown wild space. The entire lot was overgrown. The entire house was trashed and the listing, <laughs> the listing on Zillow read, enter at your own risk, which I think was really good for us because it scared a lot of other people away. My partner and I had zero experience pretty much zero experience fixing up a house zero experience with plumbing electricity carpentry woodwork nothing nothing but i had a little dream and i had a little idea and i was tired of paying rent and i had had a huge mortgage in the past and i wanted to live a freer life where I was not chained to the biggest expense, which is mortgage or rent. And so I thought if I could get a fixer upper, if I could save up enough cash and this fixer upper was so bad, she didn't qualify for a loan. She won't even habitable. I could put the work into this house and the value would go up when the house became habitable. And Lord, if one day she might even be approved for a homeowner's loan, the value would go up. I could put my time and my effort into my own wealth. Now, there were cute things about this property. A lot of stonework, patios, that kind of thing. But there was a giant hole in the front porch. The front porch was a wreck. That's why it was dangerous to enter. And what everybody really wants to know, what I'm going to talk about today is Yes, this house cost $20,000, but we had to put a lot into her before she became habitable and our super cozy home. So how much did we pay for the house in the end? So here's the big things that have to be included in this cost, this final tally of what this house cost us. Here are the big things. She did not have electricity. We had to run all new electricity. She did not have plumbing. We had to run all new plumbing. <laughs> and y'all, she had no heating or cooling. So we had to do heating and cooling. Now, in general, the house was unmaintained, vacant for a long old time, and she needed some improvements. Now, we were mostly, mostly doing all that ourselves. But we also had to get a contractor for a few of the bigger projects. So, that's the big costs that we had to add in to the purchase price. Now, the rest of it, y'all, we painted and we cleaned and we DIY'd all the time, all the time. And those, I got so many little things from the Habitat for Humanity Restore, light fixtures for $4, for $7, buckets of paint for $12, all that stuff could come out of like, the weekly little, any extra little change or money, we picked up little this and that along the way here and there. So, without further ado, let's get to the big expenditures. I got to here in my kitchen, my super cute kitchen that I absolutely love working in, cooking in, living in. I got three children, did I mention that? And so what we had to do in this house is I need somewhere to do laundry. We have one bathroom and we have a kitchen. And I also said I couldn't live my life without a water hose outside because I'm a prolific gardener. So we had to have all that. So what we got upstairs is our one bathroom and we got our washing machine. And then downstairs, I don't do dishwashers. I don't do any bells and whistles. Did I mention this is a frugal fixer upper? Frugal fixer upper. It's frugal, it's creative. We live in simple over here. And that's how I like it. So we had to have a sink. That's it. No ice makers, no dishwashers, none of that. So the sink got a little complicated. So over here, you'll see pipes, PVC pipes running up. And then we've got PEX piping in the ceiling, that kind of stuff. We got a plumber to do this. 
that was a bit of a nightmare. The plumber never, ever, ever stayed on schedule. Never, it was like, he'd say it'd taken two days to do something. Two days actually meant two months. That was a nightmare. What we had to do was get a pump because the natural fall of the plumbing, if you know anything about plumbing, won't work in. So we had to have a pump installed and we had to have the pipes installed. And then we have upstairs a washing machine and a shower and a bathtub and a sink and a toilet. And you have to have like a vent pipe going up out the ceiling of the house and all that. Now, what we did, we ended up with the final total. Honestly, you guys, this plumber drug out the work for so, so long. Before we even got that plumber, it was one plumber ghosted us. Everyone kept telling us to do the plumbing ourselves, which seems crazy. I still don't feel like I'm up to doing a plumbing of a whole house, but people kept telling us it's easy, do it yourselves. Maybe it is, but we didn't. We ended up with $7,000 get everything plumbed, $7,000. But I got my water hose outside, I got the washing machine upstairs, I got a sink, a toilet, a bathtub, that was important to me, and a shower. So we did have to put in a pump to make the water work. We had to run all new pipes, but we had to have like a new sink, a new toilet. We also had tankless hot water heater put in. I like it. I like everything in this situation. I highly recommend the tankless hot water heater. You do save on your electricity bill. So 7,000 for plumbing y'all. That's what it ended up with. I think the plumber led us to believe it was gonna be less expensive and a lot faster, but that's not how it worked out. This is my bedroom y'all that I share with my partner and my little baby. And then the two big kids have a bedroom upstairs. And then we have an extra room in the basement that's really nicely finished off, which works as the home office because my partner works from home full time. So that's two bedroom house, one bathroom. You know, it's questionably a third bedroom, but those basement rooms can be a little iffy, no closet, kind of far away from the bathroom, but we do enjoy that extra room for my partner down there. But, so we got three levels and what did it cost to run all the electricity? Now I'm telling you, we had to get it inspected by the government because it was legally uninhabitable. So everything in this house was inspected, which is, you gotta do things right. You can't cut corners if you're getting inspected. And the government's up in your business. They're doing like a rough in inspection, a final inspection, all that. So I had one electrician that we worked with who was really, really cheap. And we bought all the materials ourselves. Like, I don't think he was insured or anything like that. He just knew how to run wires. And I liked him a lot and got on well with him. And I just go to Lowe's and buy everything he needed. And then we had like an electrical supply store for like circuits and different things in the switch box. And so I'd go there and buy whatever he said we needed. Now, then there was like a spell where I didn't talk to him for a while and his phone got cut off and I've never heard or saw from him again. And I had a half finished job in here. Now I'll tell you, working, <laughs> with contractors and plumbers and electricians, especially if you're working for people who work for themselves, really independent people, it can be hard to keep them straight. So I lost, I ain't seen or heard from him to this day. So I paid him, I got supplies, we got a lot of the work done. Then I had to get another electrician who actually also ended up being our plumber. Now he finished all this for the final inspection. Um, we did do one big order of light fixtures from Amazon, which is included in the final of this electrical cost. And then like I'm saying, $4 light fixtures from the Habitat for Humanity Restore, that kind of thing saved us a lot of money. So what did it cost y'all? What did it cost to do all this electricity? 6,600 for all the electricity in this house, 6,600. That's what it costs, y'all. Now this is the living room. Now there wasn't so much to do in here and we did have a lot of nice rock work, 
But it brings us to our next point, which is the mini splits. We got two mini split units. And what did that cost us? Oh. We going upstairs. The house is still a little rough around the edges, but government says she's livable and I just love living here. So you got a remote over here by the door frame. Now we're upstairs in the kids room. This is where the second unit of the mini split is upstairs in the kids room. So we got one downstairs and one upstairs and that does heating <laughs> and cooling. So I love the mini splits. It cools and heats fast. Like it'll cool down the room fast. It'll heat up the room fast. Now this house needs more insulation. We still a little chilly in the winters, but I do love the mini splits for what they are. It costs 6,800 to get mini splits put in. Let me show you the unit outside. This is the outdoor unit that runs those two indoor units. So that cost included the units and the installation. And I did shop around and that was a better deal. Now that brings me to another point, a really good point. So I'm gonna try and drop my little truth bombs on y'all. Things that I learned. And I want all y'all to learn along with me. It matters where you live. Cost is variable. If you're trying to live simply and not work all the time, maybe you need to think about where you're going to live. I am in Virginia. I am in rural Virginia, okay? So the things that cost me a certain amount here would certainly, certainly cost you more in an urban area, in a different state, in California. Like, it matters where you live. Um, the property, cost of property. You ain't gonna find a deal like this in some places. Rural areas in different states, like I think Mississippi is cheaper than Virginia. Um, so it matters where you are on the cost of materials, the cost of labor, the cost of land, all that, the cost of permits, all of that. It really varies a lot. Now, if you happen to be new to this channel, then maybe you're feeling a little bit curious about this process. Well, I filmed 135 videos from buying the house, first day walking through the door, all the way to that final inspection. So you go on to this channel page, Azalea's Way, and see how we did this fixer upper, how we learned along the way, how we had some family fun, some laughs, a little bit of stress now and then, Go see the nitty gritty 135 episodes of exactly how we did this whole thing. The best way for me to explain to you what all this contractor did is for me to show you a clip of me walking through and showing these things as they were getting done. Y'all, so there was just like cinder blocks stacked, not braced to the house, not up against the house. There was just cinder blocks stacked as a chimney and it was really scary. And we always knew we were gonna need to bring that down. And then where the original chimney once was, this is not the original chimney. At some point, the original chimney fell down, the 1929 house, remember? Anyway, the, it wasn't properly closed up. So in the children's bedroom, there was just like two pieces of plywood standing between them and the elements and there was a vine growing through it. So we're sealing up this side of the house. That was one of the things we really wanted to do before we moved in. Also, there was a hole just like in the roof near where the chimney had once fell down. And so obviously that needs to be fixed. And yeah, huge. The contractor's doing this. I didn't put up this scaffolding. I did not climb up there contractors doing this so this is one of the big big things this is the state of the children's room right now this ceiling um so the ceiling in here was crooked and i'm gonna tell y'all old houses ceilings floors everything's gonna be crooked be sloped but it was a little too sloped um and John and the contractor talked about it and what we could do to even it out and make it sturdy. So all those beams up there are like new and reinforced and like double good, good, good. So the contractor did all that. And then also at the beginning of the project, 
redid the porch. So that's her last big expense, but that was one, two, three, four huge projects that the contractor did. Now we saved money by John working as a contractor's assistant um, to help it go faster and better and all that which is a hot tip for you too. Like if you need a contractor to do something cause you don't have the experience and the know-how and the skill, say, can I work with you? Can, can I be an asset? Can I help the hours go by faster? So what did all this contract and end up costing us? I'm about ready to tell y'all the grand total of what this house cost us. Grand total on all that contracting? nine thousand six hundred dollars maybe you do math in your head and you've already added that all up but i'm about to tell you what this whole shebang house cost us all right all right y'all big reveal final tally what did the twenty thousand dollar house really cost after all those improvements y'all fifty fifty thousand dollars this house was fifty grand and she's ours she's ours and ours and ours free and clear and we love her i had a dream i had a plan i worked hard it took a long time but drip by drip the bucket fills and we done did this and we own our home free and clear dreamy little dreams y'all and keep working see y'all next time Thank you.